Hey, this is Sharon Freebutz, and welcome back to the Business School Podcast. And in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to sell stuff, not some stuff, not easy stuff, a whole boatload of stuff. And I'm going to show you how to sell them just by knowing three simple language patterns. In fact, if you actually knew these, it will help you sell boatloads of stuff without ever feeling sleazy and without ever manipulating anybody because no one ever felt good being manipulated to buy something. And that's why I call this the million dollar language patterns. These are the three uh, sales frames, three persuasion frames, three influence frames to engage with your prospects and sell a lot of stuff. I break down the three important ones step-by-step with examples, and it all starts right now. One thing is for certain, just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's working right now. So the big question is this, where can you learn what is working right now? The strategies, the tactics, the psychology, and the exact how to, how to grow your business, how to blow up your personal brand and supercharge your personal growth. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Sharon Srivatsa and welcome to Business School. Today is anti-sponsor, meaning <laughs> they didn't pay me anybody to do this, is the real brokerage, the fastest growing publicly traded real estate brokerage in the world. And I get to do this because I serve as a president of real. And uh, if you are a real estate agent anywhere in North America and you're looking for a great home where you want to build your business, grow your team, grow your revenue streams, grow more profits and grow your wealth, and also build a legacy where you can leave this behind for your team, your staff, and your family for years to come, you should check out The Real Brokerage. I actually recorded uh, eight short little videos for you to see if this is of interest to you. So go to go.joinreal.com. That's go.joinreal.com. And you get to see my smiling mug telling you about the cool things that Real offers. So if you're a real estate brokerage in North America, this may be interesting to you. That's my anti-sponsor, but let's get into today's episode. Uh, Today, I want to tell you about million-dollar language patterns. I actually wrote down three frames, three language patterns to engage prospects and sell a lot of stuff. Now, the reason I recorded this was that one of my most popular episodes of all time is something that I never thought would actually be that way, is episode 121, which is four words that don't sell. All the online gurus, all the big salespeople talk about, oh, you should say these four words, and I tell you why you should not in any reason say those four words. Uh, in any possible way. And in fact, the folks that have actually used those words reached out to me and said, hey, Sharon, I can't believe you said that. Can you educate me on it? And I actually did multiple paid coaching sessions after to explain to them why they should not use those words. And those big influencers are my friends now, which is pretty cool. So if you have not listened to anything, I actually would suggest stop listening to this episode, go back and find episode 121, which is Sharon.com forward slash episode 121, or you can just find episode 121 on my uh, my podcast directory. Four words that don't sell. It's a super short episode. I think you will love it because it'll change the way you look at language forever. But if since you're here, let's jam because I want to go fast, go furious, get you some really important language frames right now. So I'm going to run you through three important language frames that if you can master these three things, uh, you can sell anything In fact, you will sell a lot of stuff and it is so natural and so neutral and so inviting that you'll be wondering why you don't use this in everyday language. And that is the power of sales because it's all about influence is letting uh, the prospect, inviting them to do something that is good for them without it feeling like it's sleazy, without it feeling like you're pushing, without it feeling like you're forcing, without it feeling like you're convincing, without it saying like, oh, I'm going to do this fair enough. You don't ever say stuff like that. That's not what you do. You want them to want what you have. That's the most powerful thing. And that's what I'm going to share with you. So I have three uh, magical frames for you. Number one, uh, explain the sorting question. Number two, I'm going to explain the logical advisor frame. And number three, I'm going to explain the natural invitation frame. So uh, by the way, all of these I are my naming convention. So this may be called other things elsewhere. I'm sure I picked up parts of this and... Uh, different ways and from different people and have adapted this on my own. So 
whoever has come up with all of this, kudos to you, because this is a combination and an amalgamation of stuff that I've learned over the years, uh, put my own twist on it, gave it my own uh, tightness of a language packaging so that I can deliver this to you and also remember this myself. So let's jump into million dollar language patterns, the three frames to engage prospects and sell a boatload of stuff. So you may say, well, Sharon, um, what does, what makes you qualified to do any of this stuff? Well, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I've had a chance to sell hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stuff. So now you may think, well, you're exaggerating because we see online gurus say, oh, I sold a million dollars worth of stuff. You can look it up. You can look it up. I've sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stuff. After the first hundred million, I just stopped counting. Uh, I've been B to C, as in kind of business to consumer in living rooms, uh, or I've been B to B in boardrooms. I've sold stuff online. I've sold stuff offline. I've sold mainly services, but I've also sold some product, but mainly services. And these frames, uh, these are frames and scripts. So now let me explain this big difference. What is the difference between a frame and a script? A script is something that essentially helps you say the right words. A frame is something that helps them stay in context with you. I'll say it again. A script is something that helps you say the right word so that you can organize your thoughts for them. A frame is something that helps them stay in context with you. And both of these are our responsibility, right? If you have not been taught any of this, that's okay. It's not your fault, but it is your problem. Say it again. It is not your fault, but it is your problem. When you learn scripts, what happens is you're helping yourself organize your thoughts for yourself. When you actually help learn framing, you help them set context for their intention overall. So because you don't want to say dumb stuff like, oh, what you say matters. <laughs> like, like when you hear stuff like that, oh, what you say matters, who you work with matters, um, how you eat matters, how you think matters. Well, d of course, how d like, of course, that's dumb. That's so dumb to say things like that. You know why? You know why it's dumb? You know why it's duh? Because Take the inverse of that statement. Anytime you take an inverse of a statement, you will see if it sounds dumb, you will know right away. For example, say what you say matters. Okay, you want to, you, do you want to test the validity of that? Uh, take the inverse of that statement. What is the inverse of what you say matters? The inverse of what you say matters is what you say doesn't matter. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Does what you say doesn't matter make any sense? No, it does not make any sense. Therefore, the inverse of that is dumb. It's stupid. It is absolutely idiotic because the, we say uh, such obvious stuff that if you take the inverse of it, you can actually look behind the quality of the thinking around it. What you say matters is something that you should not say. You can think it. Of course, it matters. So when it's duh, it is not insightful in any way. And it doesn't give you the right framing or the right script or the right messaging or the right context or the right invitation to do more things. And, and since it's logical, we've got to do better. And that's it up our opportunity here. That's what's powerful here. Right. And so uh, let's let's jump right in because because I want to give you uh, three million dollar language patterns up. Uh, Language pattern number one, as I promised, is this, the sorting question. The sorting question is one of the most important ways in which you can start a conversation or you can jumpstart a conversation. I'll say it again. Start a conversation or jumpstart a conversation. What do I mean by that? The way you start a conversation is if it's your initial interaction with somebody without a lot of context. So, for example, if you are um, selling fitness and you are text messaging with a potential prospect on Instagram. The, you, you don't have any context. So you can ask the question, hey, are you interested in increasing muscle or reducing fat? What am I doing? I'm sorting them. Increase muscle, reduce fat, right? Uh, if you are, um, if you're, you know, a, a real estate agent and you were talking to a potential client, you could say, hey, are you an investor or are you looking for a home to live in? Are you an investor or are you looking for a home to live in? So now I, I want to see, and a lot of times it doesn't even matter if they're an investor or not. They'll say, oh yeah, we're looking for a home to live in. Now they've sorted themselves into your world, right? Uh, if you're selling or influencing around financial freedom and uh, money, you would say, are you looking to reduce debt or you increase cash flow? So what am I doing there? I'm giving them a, 
with that, I understand where they are in the world. Are you looking to reduce debt or you increase cash flow? Now I, they put themselves in a bucket, which I can optimize that bucket for them, right? Um, you can you can also say like, so if a real estate agent and you're um, walking and you have a client that walks into an open house with you, you can, you're, they're cold. You could say, are you, did you see the signs or did you find us online? What that means is they're like, oh, cool. You, did they normally, if they saw the signs, they live nearby or if they found you online means they were actually researching for the house. So they sort the question, right? It's a, it's a good thing that way. So that is to uh, so start the conversation. Starting the conversation uh, is the sorting question is a really nice way because it, it gives you a really nice point to branch off and have a more connected conversation because both of you are in rapport that way. Now, how do you jumpstart a conversation? So a lot of times you'll be in a conversation and you'll be talking about something. Say you're talking about uh, losing weight and you're talking about losing weight and losing weight and, and that's the fitness coach you're having. Now the conversation generally will uh, hit an abrupt stalling point. What do you do then? To re restart the conversation, to re-jumpstart the conversation, to rekindle the conversation, you can use a sorting question again. And the way you use a sorting question is that you don't need to have two things figured out. Say it again. You don't need to have, so you don't need to say investor or looking for a home to live in. Uh, increase muscle, lose fat. See signs, find it online. Reduce debt, increase cash flow. You see that there are two specific things, right? You don't need to have both. You can just have one. So a lot of times if a client says, oh, uh, you know, I'm really looking for a car. I'm looking to buy a Tesla. And then you can ask, hey, are you, uh, are you locked into a Tesla? Are you open to other electric car options as well? Did you see what I did? That is the generic sort. You give them, focus on them to give them the one thing. And then you ask them if something else as well. So the sort now becomes one versus everything else. So the sort is specific versus generic. Hey, are you looking at the Tesla? Are you, are you open to other uh, things as well? Are you looking to just increase the size of your biceps? Or are you looking for other things as well? Do you just want to sleep better or you want to do other things as well? Uh, do you want to, you know, are you only focused on buying a home in Laguna Beach or are you open to other areas as well? Are you looking just for a fixed rate mortgage or are you looking for other options as well? Are you looking just to save money or are you looking for other options as well? Like you can sort in any possible way, but sorting is really powerful because it allows people to start to compartmentalize and go down a decision-making path with you. Because at the end, what is sales and influence is allowing the prospect to make a decision. And the way you help them make a decision is to reduce confusion. And the way you reduce confusion is you take them down a decision-making tree. The way you take them down a decision-making tree is to give them options. The way you give them options is you start with the sorting question. And the bigger the sorting question you can give them, the faster you can give them options. And the more options you give them, the more you're the advisor and they want to work with you. Now, I know that was a lot of daisy chain around that, but the point is one of the most important frames is a sorting question frame because when we ask the sorting question well, it opens up so many opportunities for us that it both starts the conversation smoothly and it helps to restart and rekindle a conversation as well. So that is number one of the three frames to engage prospects is the sorting question. Let's jump to number two. So number two, I call this the logical advisor frame. And the logical advisor frame is most people buy, uh, 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 make, an, you know, make an emotional uh, connection to whatever they want to buy. And then they use logic to validate that. I'll give you an example. Um, my wife will walk in and she'll say, I really want that house, right? She wants to buy a house or she wants the pool or she wants the, uh, she wants the G-Wagon, whatever it may be, right? She's emotionally, she wants it for some reason. And now she has to logically validate what she wants, right? And that most big buying decisions, if you're buying a $4 ebook, that's probably, you're probably not emotionally invested in it, but most big buying decisions where we have to sell and influence them on something, there is a emotional component and people try to logically validate that. And the logical validation is what allows us to make a decision and help them make a decision. So let's say you are, um, let's say you're talking to somebody, let's use a fitness example, right? Everybody wants six pack abs. So let's say you're talking about six pack abs and you say, oh, I need to lose 10 pounds. I need to get better cardio. I need to, you know, be able to rough house with my kids. I need to not go up and down the stairs without feeling like I'm run down when I put my, sh you know, when I take off my shirt, I look in the mirror. I'm embarrassed when I look at myself and, you know, I don't eat very well. I don't sleep very well. And then, so when people say that to you, there's nothing that you can say. So, hey, if you, if you, you know, he's like, I got the perfect answer for you, right? That's, that's not what you say. The logical advisor frame is understanding that there's an emotional root cause for wanting something. And 
they are using the logic to validate what they want. And that's totally okay. And it is our job to organize the logical validation. This is why I call this the logical advisor frame. So here's what you say. And it's pretty powerful and it's non-manipulative. That's the cool part. Nothing that I'm telling you here is manipulation in any way. Because if you want to manipulate, please stop. Hit stop on this podcast and go to the next one and don't listen to any of my stuff again. Because manipulation is bad. Like NLP, oh, I'm just going to tie you down. Like NLP tie downs, bad. It's terrible. Like, yeah, the language patterns make sense, but you're forcing people into a corner. Like you're like, oh, does that make sense? Well, by, did you know that does that make sense? It is the, is When people say does that make sense, it is the number one um, most irritating thing that a prospect hates to hear. Because essentially you're telling them, does that make sense, you dodo? Does that make sense, you dumb person, right? You want it like you want to eliminate, does that make sense? Because of course it makes sense because if it, there's only two ways it does not make sense. Way number one, you suck at your explanation. Way number two, they're dumb. That is the only way what you're explaining does not make sense. Therefore, you should never say that because you are not dumb and they're not stupid. So you never want to even insinuate that in any way. That's why you should, it, it, it's the most, uh, it's the nastiest thing to say to a prospect, does that make sense? It is, a, it is probably the most uh, uh, condescending thing to say, especially in a community or with your peers or in group meetings, because what? Either you didn't explain it right, therefore you suck, or they didn't understand it and they're dumb. That's what does that make sense is the answer. So do not say that stuff. Instead, what you want to say is you want to say, because you said blank, I recommend blank. Say it again. Because you said blank, I recommend blank. Hey, Sharon, because you said you wanted to sleep better and you wanted to work up, uh, wake up with more energy and you still, and you wanted to like, you wanted to rough house with your kids and feel like you always feel like you have the strength, like you were a teenager. I recommend that we follow my XYZ plan to get you there in 90 days. Let me break it down for you. Did you see that? Because you said blank, I recommend blank. Because you said you want 10 out of 10 schools, because you said you want 10 out of 10 schools and a 15 minute commute to work and under $1.5 million, I recommend that you live in these I recommend looking at homes in these three areas of Laguna Beach because you wanted to save for college and get financial aid and not be stressed in 14 years. I recommend using this infinite banking concept instead of the 5 to 521 plan. Let me explain. Think about that, right? Because you said blank, I recommend blank. Because you said blank, I recommend blank. So a lot of times salespeople will sit there and ask a lot of questions. When you keep asking questions, what happens is the 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 prospect or even your teammates uh, get tired. They what they get is is analysis and answer fatigue. So you're like, well, I just ask a lot of questions. Well, when when people have to think and answer a lot, what they get is that they have to process, and it's very tiring to do that. They get analysis and answer fatigue because they have to take their abstract ideas and they have to put them into language and they have to explain them to you without actually having uh, while doing it in a kosher way. Right. And that's very hard to do. Now, most people, unless they are deeply extroverted, can't do that. And they will, they will, they'll, they'll struggle to do that. And so you want to, you want to, you want to break that up. And you also want to help them feel heard. Because if you ask me seven or eight questions, I have no idea whether you're listening or not, or whether you're doing some kind of active listening technique where you just ask me a bunch of questions, you're going to pitch me whatever you want at the end. No, what you want to do is after you ask a few questions, you should say, hey, because you said blank, I recommend blank. Because you said blank allows them to know that you heard them. And then it says, hey, I took the input that you gave me. And because you said blank, I recommend blank. Therefore, your recommendation is not based on you selling them something. Your recommendation is an invitation to them, specified to them, customized to them, and in their best interest. Because you said blank, I recommend blank. That is the logical advisor frame. If you start to utilize that in your conversations right now, it's really, really powerful because what you're looking for when you, and here's the most interesting part. When you take notes, right? Just take notes like this. Oh, I want 10 out of 10 schools, dash 10 out of 10. I want to live 15 minutes from, you know, work and I want to never get on the freeway. Cool. Hey, Sharon, because you said you want 10 out of 10 schools, you want to live 15 minutes from work and you never want to get on the freeway. I recommend you, I recommend we look at homes in Newport Beach, Laguna Beach and Dana Point. Like, because you said blank, I recommend blank. 
That's super, super powerful. That is called the logical advisor frame. All right. Here's number three, the natural invitation frame. And let me explain what this works. The natural invitation frame is a way in which you want to set up the next steps or set up ne the next appointment. Um, and it's really powerful. This is one of the most important frames that you can utilize to convert somebody that is completely cold into setting appointments with you or uh, to take the next step of a meeting with you. One of my favorite ways to use the natural invitation frame is to use it to set up the next step really well in a conversation because what happens in sales? Sales is what? It is, it is organizing the next step. That's what sales is, organizing the next step so that it is the right fit for them, right? You want to organize the next step so that it is the right fit for them. Most people, what has the internet done? It has organized the next step so that it's the right fit for them. What has Uber done? Uber allows you to get a tax, get a, get a cab, and has organized the next step so that it's the right fit for them, right? Essentially, what did the app do? It just basically went in, you were able to put your details in, you were able to find the next cab, you were able to choose it, and it organized the next step so that it's the right fit for them. What did Amazon do? Instead of instead of scouring 14 different um, websites and calling places and driving to the local grocery store or whatever, you go on Amazon and it's organized all the resources. So it organizes the next step and it says, you want this thing tomorrow or in prime today? Organize the next step. Big part of sales is that you want to organize the next step because a lot of people, when they come to a sale, they don't know what to do next. Here's what happens next is a really good part of sales because when you can organize the next step, Good sale, it allows you to sell more. A good salesperson always utilizes, essentially, this is the this is the progression, right? You sort the, you do a sorting question. You, you tell them because you said blank, I recommend blank. And then it's, all of this happens and you say, and you walk the next step. So let me break down how this works. The natural invitation frame goes like this. Why don't we blank so that blank? I call this the why don't we so that frame. Um, this is, I, by the way, this, I have not heard anywhere I came up with this uh, and I'm sure some version of this exists, but I've been utilizing this for the last 10 plus years. I probably taught it to thousands of people. There are multiple companies that actually train exactly using this. I, I Several of my friends actually say, hey, if you don't use Sharon scripts, you're not allowed to be in our company, which is which is good. But many part, the big part of this is the why don't we sew that frame? This is not a tie down. This is an invitation frame. This is That's why I call this the natural invitation frame. So please let me... Um, take you through what this means. So uh, this is called a why don't we so that frame, all right? The idea here is every conversation will will come to a natural abrupt point where something needs to happen next, right? So say, for example, you're on a phone call qualifying or talking to a prospect that is, it's a cold prospect. And you say, hey, uh, hey Mr. Prospect, you know, you do some sorting questions. You understand because you said blank, I recommend blank. And then finally, the conversation is like, great, what, where should we go from here? This is what you say. Um, why don't we blank so that blank? So why don't we get together for a cup of coffee and before your coffee actually gets cold, I'll, I can break down for you what it takes to buy a home in today's market in Laguna Beach. Did you see how I did that? Why don't we, right? Why don't we get together for a cup of coffee so that I can break down for you what it takes to buy a home in today's market so that you can make an informed and intelligent decision. So that you can make an informed and intelligent. But if you're, why don't we, why don't, if your why don't we is pretty tight, you almost don't even need the so that. That's why it's, it's the so that is implied, right? Hey, why don't we get together for a cup of coffee? And before your cup of coffee gets cold, I can break down for you what it takes to buy a home in today's market. Why don't we set up a 10 minute call and I can take you through, uh, you know, the, the, the high point. So what, what you may like to do one to three, what, uh, why don't we meet for 10 minutes on zoom? And I can share my screen and draw out a plan for you to retire in the next seven years so that you can be, so that you can, you know, so that you can not have to worry about retirement anymore. Why don't we so that? Why don't we so that? Because it's very hard to say, hmm, no, at the end of that call, it's very hard when you do a, why don't we so that frame? What, what, you know, here are three objections at the end of a call that, that generally happen. Yes, let's do it. Or not uh, three natural outcomes. Yes, let's do it. Um, no, this is not the right fit for me, or maybe I need to think about it, right? And do you know what is the most relevant one? M most people don't say, no, this is not relevant. Most people will say, eh, because they, they don't like saying no, right? They'll just say, well, let me think about it. But when the, the number one way to beat the let me think about it uh, uh, objection from ever coming up 
is doing the natural invitation frame because it's very hard for somebody to listen to a natural invitation and then say, let me think about it because it is a natural invitation to what they actually want. What do they want? They want to know what it takes to buy a home in Laguna Beach. They want to know, you know, the three ways in which they can grow their business. They want to know what it takes to retire in seven years. Therefore, you say, hey, why don't we blank meet for 30 minutes on Zoom so that I can share my screen and draw out a plan for you so that you can retire in the next seven years like I've done for several of my clients. Why don't we so that? That is a natural invitation frame. Now, if you can put all of these, if you can just put these three frames together. Now, I will tell you this. If you can just teach these three frames to your teams, to your salespeople, to our, in fact, you should send this to them. If you rewrite your scripting using these three things, if there is no sorting question in your scripting, if there is no logical advisor frame in your scripting, and there is no natural invitation frame in your scripting, your scripting is not optimized, right? Because you're leaving a ton of money on the table and helping not helping a lot of people just because of that. So the sorting question is, hey, say, hey, um, did you see the signs or did you find us online? Are you increasing, increasing muscle or lose fat? The sorting question helps you go down that path. Number two, the logical advisor frame is because you said blank, I recommend blank. And the third is a natural invitation, which is why don't we blank so that blank, the why don't we so that frame, right? Um, if you like any of this stuff, by the way, and especially if you're a real estate agent in North America or anywhere in the world, you should go, I actually pulled all my, seven of my best trainings that I used to sell for, for a lot of money. And uh, in fact, several people have taken those and made money, made paid trainings out of that, which I, which I think is fascinating. It is amazing that people will take my free stuff and make paid stuff out of it, which is like the, I normally like 10 years ago, I would be irritated by it, but I cannot see that as a bigger compliment right now. But to, to just have that, I want to give this to you for free. You know why? Because I don't have the way, I don't have a way, not, not that I don't, I don't have time to sell anything. Uh, in my in my role as a president of Real and running a public company, I want to make sure that you get my stuff because otherwise, if you don't get it, it's just sitting around. So go to topagentpowerpack.com. Uh, these are my seven trainings that I love that uh, have uh, created a lot of wealth for a lot of people. So if you're in the real estate business or if you're selling anything, go to topagentpowerpack.com and it will help. It'll totally help you. It's totally free. Okay. All right. Let's sort really quick. Uh, I am going to give you a one minute recap and then something that you've not heard before. Okay. Number one, uh, the number one of the three million dollar language patterns are uh, the sorting question frame, which is essentially, uh, you know, would you like this or would you like that? Are you, you know, are you an investor? Or are you looking to for a home to live in? Right. The second one is the logical advisor frame because you said blank. I recommend blank. And the third is uh, why don't we sew that? That is the setting up the next steps as part of the sales process, because good sales is where you always organize the next step that is good for them. Now, uh, you, if you have not listened to this uh, episode 121 with four words that don't sell, I will tell you what the four words are. The, the their first two words are fair enough, and the next two words are make sense. Hey, um, I'm gonna cut this and cut that, and we'll get you the deal, fair enough, bad. Do not say that. That was popularized by the Wolf of Wall Street. There's a lot of tonality around that. And fair enough, it's an acceptance frame, not a sales frame. And I explain why that is. And you should look at that. And that makes sense. I already went into it. It's extremely condescending. So uh, instead, you should say, is that helpful? Or how does that sound? Or would that help you? That's so much better. But episode 121, four words that don't sell. You should totally listen to that. If you sell anything, you should listen to this episode and make notes on it. And you should also listen to four words that that don't sell. All right. So here are the next steps. Number one, if you've not listened to it, go to listen to episode 121, four words that don't sell. Number two, please, please, please. If this is a, if, if you actually like this, I don't, I, I want a little tactical on this one. I don't know you like this. So I would really, really appreciate this. I know, I know you're driving, you're lazy and you don't want to do this. I get it. But you, I don't, because of the podcast medium, I have no idea if this is of interest to you. So please do me a favor, Right. If you want me to make more like this stuff for you, because I don't have anything to sell you, there's nothing for you to buy from me. The least I can do is when I'm creating content, when I'm putting ideas together, when I'm working on this, when I'm writing stuff down, I can at least build what would be helpful to you. So please help me do the right thing for you. Can you please just screenshot this episode and tag me? So at least I know that was helpful. If you just sit tag me saying, yes, Sharon, make more like this. Sharon, that was awesome. Sharon, I want more like this. Sharon, this is good. Just give me some feedback because I don't have any more any direct feedback on the podcast. And by the way, 
over the last six months, uh, in less than, you know, 150 episodes, we hit top six on the iTunes charts. And so I cannot thank you enough for this. So uh, I, I don't, I'm not asking you to like or subscribe or leave a comment or do anything like that. Like, I'm not asking you for any of that. You don't need to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Don't do it. I'm not asking for any of this. I'm not asking you to share this episode. I'm not asking you to do any of that. It would be awesome if you did and it'll grow by word of mouth. And that would be amazing if you did. But I know you're not going to. And that's fine because I, I'm going to make this for you regardless. So let me make more of the stuff that you like. And that's my honest kind of request from you. So if you like this, please screenshot it, tag me and say something. So at least I know the types of things you're interested in so I can make more like this for you. All right. Uh, these are, this was the million dollar language patterns, the three, uh, the three sales frames to engage prospects and sell a lot of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, Sharon, I have a cool gift for you. Since you like this podcast, I actually have an ultra super secret private podcast that I make just for my partner companies and the CEOs and influencers that I advise. It's called 10K Wisdom because I try to wrap $10,000 worth of value in every single episode in just under 10 minutes. That's why it's called 10K Wisdom. It's raw, it's real, it's got no intro or outro or anything like that. It's just straight to the point and to the insights. Since you like this podcast, I think you will like that. So, for the first time, I'm making it available to you. Just go to 10kwisdom.com, the number 10kwisdom.com, and my team will activate it for you as my gift. Go to 10kwisdom.com. I'll see you there. <laughs>